Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Adobe Photoshop Elements video we're looking at how to do a couple of high contrast or high dynamic range looking images where we have real bright brights, real dark darks. And just two different approaches to that. The first one here is using a soft light technique to actually get the HDR look. And the second one is using the hard light effect to get the HDR look and some additional tricks in there as well. Let's just see how these both work. There's two different approaches to do kind of the same thing make a more contrasty image. Now we'll be starting with the original pictures. So let me just get these out of the way. And I'll minimize that. And we'll start with the bridge first. Now this technique is very easy and very quick. Let's just zoom in a bit on this. And it requires making two copies of the bridge image. So I'll make our first copy drag it up here. There we go. Make a second copy of our two copies. Let's hide the top copy. Back to that in a second. On this copy we're going to convert this into a black and white image. So enhance, convert to black and white, choose your settings. There are several to choose from in here. I'll leave the scenic landscape default and that gives us our black and white. We're now going to blend this layer into the background color layer. Go up here to the blending modes and do an overlay. And there we go. That brings in a lot of that contrast right there. See, there it is without and there it is with. We already have a much more contrasty image, much higher dynamic range in the image just doing that one trick. We're basically taking a black and white and blending the black and white into the color, increasing the blacks and the whites in the image. Let's take this one step further, and that's with our top color layer up here. And on this one, we're going to, again, blend this using a soft light. There's our soft light effect. And then we're going to soften the whole picture up by softening up this image by blurring it just a little bit. So filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. If I pull this way down, there we go. If you blur it just, just out a little bit, and it's a little hard to see. If I click on and off, you can see the effect. It just kind of softens down the picture. See how it's a bit contrasty in here, a bit contrasty over in here. We add this, this blurring effect just a little bit. It kind of knocks down some of those contrast areas in there and choose OK. And again, that's a soft light. And that's all there is to that one. As you can see, very, very fast technique. So original layer, second layer converted to black and white, and overlay blending mode. Third layer, soft light blending mode, and a little bit of blurring with a Gaussian blur filter. There it is. Just, just a slight blurring effect on that. And put those all together. Give this kind of nice high dynamic range looking image. Okay, so that's our first approach, our first effect. I'll bring up the other image now. There we go. And let's see what we can do to this one to make it a little bit more exciting as well. We'll zoom in. But a bit more on this one and a little different approach. But first, I want to kind of clean up the image. Notice here that this tower here is anything but vertical. If I choose the middle of the bottom of the tower, you can see right there, the top of the tower is way off center. 
So we're going to first try to adjust that. Double click on the background layer, just make it a regular layer. I'm going to copy that layer and keep that as a backup, just in case. Now on the copy, let's distort this. We're going to transform our image. Image, transform, and we can do a skew or a distort or a perspective. I think a little bit of perspective might be enough. I'm going to grab the upper left hand corner and I'm just going to pull that out a bit. Like that. And that compensates for the angle of the camera and straightens everything up. See how all the lines are now nice and straight and vertical. Choose OK. So we've now straightened our picture up and removed that distortion caused by the camera, basically me being down low looking up at the image. So we've actually distorted the image back into a more correct position that can now get rid of that guideline, no longer needed. All right, that's the first step. Now that we have that done, we can actually take a look at that. There's the original distorted and there's the cleaned up. Now again, you can use any tool you want to make that adjustment. I just chose to use that one perspective tool for that, but that gives us a nice clean looking image. Okay, now, just like before, we're going to make a a copy is actually make two copies. Copy one and copy two. Okay, there we go. First copy, convert that to black and white, same as we did before. Enhance, convert to black and white. I'll leave it at the defaults. Again, same thing. I am going to use the overlay on this one. And that brings in that high contrast look for us with that overlay. Now, we're going to go even stronger on this one. I'm not going to blur this one out, but we're going to come in and do a hard light look on this one. So hard light, and that makes it really dramatic. Now it's too much, obviously, so we can bring this effect down a little bit by bringing back the opacity just a touch. About halfway down, so there it is. And what that does is it, it really pushes those darks a lot darker, giving us a, a very strong looking image. Now let's put in some coloration. I'm going to have some, some light tones, left hand side, some cooler tones on the right hand side. So we'll need to have two layers for that. One, two. The first layer up here, let's put in some orange at the upper left hand corner. And I'm going to back out a bit on the image here. Hold the Alt key down. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And then go to the paintbrush. We'll find a very large paintbrush. Now sometimes the brush size doesn't show properly on the screen here. So I have one at on my screen at about 919 pixels. Real large, real large brush. I want to have this a soft brush. Actually, let's choose soft brush and bring that up to about 900 or so. Okay, that's good. Real large brush. I now want an orange color for that, so window will bring our color swatches up, and let's choose a nice bright orange. There we are. It's pure red orange. That works. And we're on a, a clean layer. I'm just going to tap in a bit right there. Let's go to our next layer. We'll put some blue in on this layer. So window color swatches and let's just grab the blue I'm gonna tone it down a bit of a toned down blue I think right there will work out well that's the dark blue and I'm gonna bring in just some darker blues here into the outside edge so we have these two areas of color now on the orange we're going to screen this so overlay and come down to screen and you can see that it leaves a warmth up here now. We're no longer seeing the orange effect, but we're seeing a warmth on that. And that's what we're looking for on that side. On the right side, a little different approach. We'll use a soft light on this. And that just cools out the darks. The reason that we're using different settings is because of the light and the dark colors. If I went to screen on this, we would still see a lot of that coloration in there, which I don't want to have happening. I want to keep that coloration up here, but I don't want it down there. So we're using a soft light instead. And that just adds the blue to the lighter parts and doesn't add it to the darker parts. So there we go. 
and we'll zoom in a little bit on that. Again, a very quick technique, but you can make much more dramatic looking images this way. So we had one technique for the HDR or high dynamic range effect with the bridge, and then a second similar technique, again doing a high dynamic, dynamic range, but bringing in some color variations as well, and a little perspective shift on that. So there's a couple things, again, to take a plain image and make it a lot more interesting by playing around here with the blending modes and some colorization. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.